Oh, baby. 
the Lord. Let's just give him praise. Lift up your hands and just worship him. Bless his holy name. You are the center of our lives. We worship you tonight. Blessed be your name forever. We magnify you, Lord. Yes, oh, Brenda. We worship you tonight. We adore you. Blessed be your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we give you glory and honor and adoration. Now, lift your hands and begin to pray that tonight the word of God will come to you. Your heart is ready. Begin to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray right now. Come on, release your faith. Not just the preacher should release his or her faith. You must release your faith. Wherever you are watching us from, all over the world, release your faith that tonight the anointing of God will be upon the servant of God to preach, to deliver the word of God in accuracy. Wherever you are, lift your hands, stretch your hands towards the screen, stretch your hands towards the stage and pray and tell the Lord, Lord, touch your servant with your anointing like never before. I also put my faith on the line and I draw by your anointing, I draw revelation knowledge from the throne of grace. I draw understanding and insight in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we lift our hands unto you tonight. We gather from all over the world. We thank you. Because your word is powerful. We are gathered with the attitude of Mary tonight. You said she has embraced and she has possessed the best. She has made the best choice by sitting at your feet to hear your word. We are here gathered to hear your word tonight. Thank you, Father, for that blessing that is upon our lives, for being attentive to your word. And tonight, Lord, uh, let your word go forth with miracle signs and wonders. Lord, let every hearer be anointed for exploit to get results that are of a divine order. We thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Everybody say amen. Please remain standing, everybody. Remain standing. Uh, we're going to be reading the Bible tonight. Remember, we are so we welcome you you're watching us on television you're watching us on internet you're watching us on youtube facebook wherever you're watching all over the world get ready the anointing of god is going to touch you wherever you are so pick your bible pick a note pick a notebook pick a pen pick a tablet pick a device and let's take down some notes as we go into the mind of god tonight in jesus name a series we're doing a series throughout this this month and uh that series is titled what? Seven what? Psalms that bring radical change. Just in case some of us don't we've forgotten. Seven Psalms that bring radical change. There are 150 chapters in the book of Psalms. But we want to look at seven of them that will bring transformation and change. The book of Psalms is not a book for you to put on open something and put under your pillow it's not a magic book talisman it's not juju it's not voodoo no it is as you have revelation knowledge insight understanding god opens your eyes through this series of messages and you have understand you can comprehend what god is saying at the level of your existence and then you begin to act it out and speak it out then all of heaven's power comes to confirm the fact that the God that puts that scripture in the Bible is a real and living God. That's how you get power out of any part of the Bible. And the book of Psalms is not an exemption. Can somebody say amen? So tonight, we are going to be doing Psalms chapter 91. Let's go to Psalm 91. We're going to read all together the 16 verses and then you sit down. We want to go into God's word. We're just going to read the 16 verses. Everybody out loud. We're going to read. All right. So we're ready. Let's go. One, two, three, go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. 
His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Tonight, our message is titled Divine Protection. You may be seated. I believe this message is very, very, very um, calmly and timely. Maybe some of you are aware of a, an incident that took place in a few, just a few days ago um, in the city. A lady that boarded a BRT bus. And before you knew it, yeah, she had been killed. She had been murdered. And, um, well, for some reason, technology is helping one way or the other to solve the case uh, because they've picked up a number of people. But then when you, when you read such things, when you hear of such things, you understand that we are living in very dangerous times. In actual fact, the Bible says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Praise God. Perilous times in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous time, peril, perilous simply means uh, dangerous times shall come. Praise God. Dangerous, and that's found in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This also know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. The word peril, peril means danger. So dangerous times shall come. That's what it's saying here. Yeah. Dangerous time. I mean, that's amazing. You would think that um, the, the, the mo if, if they, they warn you, don't enter into Kabuka, don't enter into unmarked vehicles, don't enter into taxis that are not marked and all of that. But who should tell you not to enter into a bus that is a government-owned, government-registered bus? So, so these are very dangerous times. So you got to listen to what I've got to preach tonight. Please and um, please, whoever you are, wherever you are, don't discount. Forget about the fact that you know me before. I'm going to be giving you revelation from the word of God. Things that will help us to make sure that we are safe in God. Because God, God wants you to know how to believe him for security. How to believe him for safety. How to believe him for protection. Praise the Lord. To the end that, like we saw in the last verse, you can have long life. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Praise God. All right. Because increasingly, the world is becoming more and more a dangerous place, a perilous place. However, because we are God's children, God has a different plan for us. There is a way we can operate, even though there is peril all around, that we can operate in such a way that it doesn't touch us. It doesn't affect us. It doesn't harm us. Why? Because we are covenant children of God. Why? Because we belong to the Father. Why? Because the author of all of this stealing, killing, destruction, Satan, we have been delivered from his power. Now, we are put over his head. But we must understand. We must have insight. And that's why God decided to give us Psalm 91. I will recommend that you memorize all the 16 verses of Psalm 91. 
These are the kind of times we're living in. Can somebody say amen where we are? All right. So let's kick it off. Let's look at what God says here. I'll just pick it like two, two or three verses at a time, and then we go on and on, and I'll make some, and I'll share with you some things here. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So this is, so God, God has a secret place. Somebody say secret place. God has a secret place. God has a place of protection. On this earth, on this planet, not just in heaven, on this earth, God has a place where you can be secure, where a place of safety for you. No matter the evil going around, no matter how crazy the devil is getting, no matter how dark the world and how depraved it is, God has safety for you and I. Can somebody say amen? So, this protection is a perfect protection. Perfect protection. Fail-proof protection. Protection that cannot fail. But you've got to understand, it's not just, ah, I know it's there. You, there's, some, you, there's a place you've got to play. There is a responsibility you have. Child of God, God just doesn't do things anyhow. There is a responsibility. There's a God word part and there's a man word part. Let me slow down on that. For you to see God's um, uh, blessing, fulfillment of his promise in your life on earth, there's a part that God will play, but there's a part you must play. And usually, man, you must play your part before God steps in and plays his part. You must find out what your... Ignorance is no excuse. The fact that you did not know or you were not taught or you did not hear a message telling you what part God expects you to play. Does not, Satan doesn't play fair. In fact, Satan looks for such ignorant people, especially ignorant Christians who are not taught very well, who are not shown the scriptures and the mind of God that this is what you should do to qualify for protection. The devil is not fair. Ignorance is no excuse. That's why we got to pray and say, Lord, all the insight, I pray regularly, all the insight and understanding I need to have, please get it across to me. My heart is sincere. My heart is open. Help me to know. I might have read this Bible so many times. There are still a trillion things in it I don't know, I'm sure. Open my eyes. Help me to know. When you are like that, then God can use you and walk with you and he can show you the way. Somebody say amen. So, we see here that protection is hinged on this opening verse. The first verse and the second verse. Why will God protect you? How will God protect you? We begin to see your responsibility. The Bible says, he that dwelleth. So, so we see that the subject matter is the person. The person. In the, in the Lord's house, there can be two people sitting on a row. One person will qualify for protection. Another person will not get divine protection. Why? Because it is he, it is that person that chooses to do the right thing. So the choice is yours. He or she that dwells. So the first responsibility, brothers and sisters and gentlemen, is are you dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? So this is something you have to do. God has a secret place. But are you dwelling there? If you are not dwelling there, divine protection is not automatic for you. But if you are dwelling in the secret place of Most High, the Bible says you shall abide under the shadow. Shadow there means that you are so near, under the covering. That's the word, the meaning of that word. Under the covering or under the protection, under the canopy of the Almighty. How do you get that? You must dwell, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. What? So, the condition is this condition. Listen. Okay, maybe I'll tell you the stories later on. Step by step. Let's look into what for the first. I'll tell you stories. So, it is conditional. Divine protection is... Sometimes we say, why, why did that happen to it? And that person is a Christian. Oh. That person goes to church. Oh. That person is a, he has his title in the church. Oh. No, 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 no. no. It has to be. There's, there are con there's always a reason. And it is never a fault with God. Never. You've got to make sure you are dwelling. To dwell means to take up residence. In the secret place of the Most High. 
You take up residence in the city. Not just that you visit sometimes or from time to time. No, that becomes your address. That becomes your dwelling place. What does the secret place mean? Jesus Christ taught us in the Gospels and he said that your fa- when you need something from God, you want to pray, go into your secret place. Find the secret place. And your father who sees in secret. So in other words, the secret place has to do with a place of personal prayer life. Secret place has to do with a place of personal worship. Personal day-to-day Bible study. Forget about the fact, I'm always preaching this. Forget about the fact that your pastor knows Bible or not. Do you know Bible? Forget the fact that your pastor, people are always trying to go, I'm going to a place where the pastor is hot and, and, and it's all right, it's good for pastors to be sound and etc. But you, you, pastor doesn't live with you all the time. You live with yourself all the time. Do you have a Relation, do you have a dwelling? Do you dwell in God's presence by daily reading your word, the Bible, daily worshiping on your own, daily praying on your own, daily staying close to God, daily opening, and then even after that special time of daily morning devotion, while you are on your work, you are from time to time thinking to God, meditating to God, and thinking back and forth with God. That means you are, that is, that's what it means to be dwelling. It's an ongoing relationship all day long. Do you have a special time in the morning? Yeah. Now, I see that so many people are on the internet. Hey, early morning devotion. Pastor, so, so, so. Early morning. I'm, I keep on asking myself. So, all these pastors that people cannot have their own personal day devotion except a pastor picks a daily devotion every morning on social media. When do you have time to pray for yourself by yourself? As a pastor, do what I do for you on Sunday and on Wednesday and on Friday. Should that not be enough? What, so when are you going to practice having a personal? You must you see. Sometimes we over. I think we over spoon feed Christians. Christians that should be eating a bar and fufu. We are still putting feed them, but to feed them, but to feed. After years, there comes a time you must understand. I need to create a dwelling place personal dwelling place of the Lord in my own life, my relationship I must dwell. This is the number one condition for divine protection. There's only been one time I had anything major in my life. We know a few days after we got married, we had an accident. Accident. And um, etc. I had never seen it like that. I had seven, 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 five fractures in my rib. Two fractures in my pelvic bone. It was a bad accident. Pastor Dela had a fracture on her right ankle. Or so. I think it was right ankle or something. Yeah. We were, we were pastors. Yeah, that was 1990, I think. But you see, later on, the Lord spoke to me and said, You see, going into our marriage, wedding time, I was running all over, trying to do this, sort this out. I was so worried. I had abandoned my serious daily prayer time. Because early in the morning, something I had to go and run for this one. I had to go and get this one. I had to go and talk to this family member. I had to go and do this one. I have to go and do this. I had to go and, and we're starting a church. And, and I did first week, second week, three weeks, four weeks was going. And in my spirit, I kept on feeling, ah, you are abandoning the secret place. You are abandoning the secret place. You are abandoning. And then that thing happened. Can I blame God? And oh, no. Since that time, my early morning, now for decades, this happened decades, a few decades ago. For decades now, in my early morning, I wake up early in the morning. Nobody taught me. I learned the serious way. I wake up, pick my Bible, talk to the Lord. The first time I wake up after 12 midnight, and whether I'm going to the toilet at 12.30 or I woke up at 1.30, the first thing, before I even go to the toilet, I feel so worship the Lord, thank him under my breath, and acknowledge, I'm developed. You must dwell. If you're not dwelling, you are not, God is not obliged to extend divine protection to you because you are outside of the covering. So, 
Christians, let us keep that in mind. It is not for everybody. Divine protection is not promised to everybody. It is only promised to those that dwell in the secret place. The secret place of daily Bible devotion, daily Bible, daily worship, daily prayers, daily tarrying and spending time and then waiting on the Lord to speak to you and it must be daily. And after you've done the daily devotion and you get out on the way, every, during the day, ongoing talking to the Lord in your mind. You don't have to open your mouth on that one. You are thinking to him, he's not far from your thoughts. He's not. When you are like that, God marks you. With a mark, touch nuts. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Hey, my pastor is hot. My pastor is hot. Hey, they have said this. They've given me this. They're, no, those things don't work. Condition: He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, those are the ones that shall abide. God will watch over them and He will preserve them. Can somebody say Amen? If you are with me, and then verse two, the Word of God. God now says here that. I, the word of God says, I will say. Again, I is the subject here of the matter here. I, the one that wants protection. I, the human being living in this dangerous, depraved, devilish, dark, de demonic world. Let me tell you something here. There is no promise that things will even get better concerning all the danger and the evil. You see, when elections start coming like this, evil men possessed with demons, they want to get more power. And then they begin to do crazy things. But guess what? Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. That's what the word of God says. Don't worry about their sin and their darkness. God says that when they rise like that, my grace, if you qualify yourself properly, I will now increase my grace upon you. It will much more abound upon your life. Can you say amen somebody now? So always understand the full picture and walk in the full picture. Well, sin may be abounding, but grace in my life. Since I'm not a child of sin, I'm not a partaker of sin, I'm not in the kingdom of sin. Grace, I'm in the kingdom of grace. I'm a child of grace. I belong to the God of grace. Grace much more. What is grace? Divine enablement. God's ability. Much more. So expect unusual anointings on your life. Can you say amen? So that's the season we are in, in Jesus' name. God has a secret place for you and I to hide us in once we learn to dwell and do what it takes to be in the secret place. Look at, quick, let me give you a few scriptures here. Psalm 27 and Psalm 30 will help us, then we move forward. Psalm 27, verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. God has a pavilion. That pavilion casts a shadow on us. That pavilion is a covering, shielding us off every attack. He puts me, hides me, hides me. You will be hidden in Jesus' name. Where you are hidden, that simply means the devil will search for you and they cannot find you. Darkness and evil, stealing, killing, destruction, judgment of hell will look for you and they cannot locate you. You are hidden. May you be hidden in Jesus' name. He will hide us in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide us. Say, he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Praise the Lord. He has a secret place. He has a pavilion for you and I to be hidden in. Psalm 31 verse 20. Psalm 21, 31 verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of your presence from the pride of man. When man gets arrogant and proud and says, I'm going to destroy, I'm going to do this, I'm going to plan this. The Bible says... Now, God will hide you and I. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Somebody say after me, God will keep me secretly in his pavilion. Say amen if you believe it. All right. So, so God has a secret place, but you and I have to dwell. We have to do what it takes to dwell. Closeness to God. Relationship that is intimate. Intimacy with God is what God what makes God pick you and hide you? So, you have a part to play. You have to put in effort in your Christian life. It's not just coasting and cruising. No. So, you keep that in mind, all right? 
And so, number two, verse two, I will say. So, this is another thing you must do in order to have divine protection. There's something, it has something to do with your mouth and your words. The realm of the spirit responds to words. That's why in, part, in this part of the world, we are not, we are not strangers to all these things that people do incantations and etc. Because demons respond to certain words. But there are bigger and stronger creatures in the realm of the spirit. And there are righteous spirits called angels. They also respond to words. Then all of heaven and heaven's ability responds to words from your mouth. I will say by choice, whether I feel fear or not, whether anybody likes it or not, I will say, what are you saying? Alright, I will say of the Lord, I will speak of the Lord. Protection, respond. When you speak the right words, it brings down divine protection on your behalf. These promises of divine protection, they respond to your words. They respond to your words. What are you saying? What have you been saying? What are you saying about your tomorrow? I don't like talking Bible. Oh, okay. So there's no ammunition in the realm of the spirit to use to build a bulwark to surround you and to ensure you. But when you say, when you, oh, it's not only on Sundays when we confess that it's good. No, you've got to say it every day, every time, every hour. And we're going to look at what we are to say. We must say. If you are looking for something to say for divine protection, it is Psalm 91. You must say. I will say of the Lord. I will not leave it only in God's hands. There is a part I have to play in my divine protection. I must say. Proverbs 18, 21 talks about when you say, I can give you dozens of scriptures about the power of you saying how the realm of the heavenly. See, Satan is just a copycat. Satan doesn't have anything original. He just perverts what God has already created. He knows that if you want the realm of the spirit to begin to show up in the realm of the natural, human beings, we must say. When the Bible created man, he created man, he breathed into man, the Bible says in Genesis, and man became a living soul. He became a nephesh. The Bible calls, Hebrews calls it nephesh. That's the, that's the Hebrew word. And that's Literally means a speaking spirit. A spirit that operates by speaking. That's why Jesus Christ said, if you have any mountain in your life, say it to this mountain. Or else the mountain remains. Say it with be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. That is the kind of creature you are. You are not a goat. You are not a donkey that just can't say. You are not a bird that can't say. You are in the image and likeness of God. You are a speaking spirit. I will say. You speak out. Sorrows, okay. No, you, know, you know people take things and they just use it for natural things. No, no, no. We use it in that scripture. Speak up the scriptures. Speak up the promises of God over your life. Speak up the words of protection. Can somebody say amen to somebody now? These promises respond to your words. They are voice activated. I went to one hotel some Monday in California. And so, so they gave me the way the room operates. That when I enter the room, if I want the light to come on, I just say, Alexa, put on the light. So there's a, <laughs> there's a contraption that's like a the remote sensor that operates that controls the light, controls the shower, controls the heater in the bathroom, controls the TV, can help me to change the channel without me getting up from my bed. All I just say, Alexa, close the curtain. I, I just thought in my mind, I can't live like this. I will, you know, you grow fat, you will not exercise anything. So one day I wanted to test, I said, Alexa. Look for a Christian radio station for me and put it on. He just said, okay. Before I knew it, Christian song. Ha! So I went to look at the radio. It had tuned it to <laughs> I just thought in my mind, this room is voice activated. Do you know that is how your life should be on earth? Amen. There's a spiritual Alexa. When you speak, 
they do what you have said. They do what you have said. And they are waiting to do what you have said. All right. So, so Proverbs 18, 21 says that life and death are where? In the power of the tongue. In other words, what you say out of your mouth. If you want life, then speak words of life. If you want death, then keep up on saying everything. You know, a lot of slangs nowadays are calling death. I love you, die. Mad. Oh. All of the negative things. And it's a certain subtle way of putting the people of the world, putting his plans in their tongue and making them use the powers of the realm of the spirit against themselves. So you've got to watch what you are saying. Don't just think, ah, it's the latest fad. Oh, oh. Don't get the latest problems. The latest fads usually bring the latest problems. Watch it. Correct each other. Christians, let's correct each other. Don't let's keep on talking and behaving with the culture and the lifestyle of Gentiles and sinners. We want to be among. Among who? Among the righteous or among the ungodly? So let's keep that in mind. Are we together, somebody? Right. So I will say, you must say for protection to be your portion. You must say for protection to be your portion. Your words are the raw materials that build a house and a, and a fortress of protection around you. I will say of the Lord, he is my... I can't hear you. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Praise God. So, you declare what you say of the Lord is what it manifests for you. So, God says, I want you to declare, I want to hear from your mouth that you, that you call me I, that I am your refuge. I am, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. What else? And my fortress. So a refuge is a shelter. A shelter. There's bombs. Russia is throwing bombs at Ukraine. But many people have already built bunkers. It's called shelter. Bomb shelters. Bunkers. The Lord is your bunker. The Lord is your shelter. The Lord is your refuge. Can somebody say amen? And then he said, I will say, he is also my fortress. A fortress is a strong tower. A fortress is a place where you can run in. It's your defense. It's, your, it's, your, it's a strong place. You have to say that. that Lord, God, you are my defense. God, you are my hiding place. God, you are my fortress. God, you are my... When it is those that say that, that God marks down and says, Satan, this one, when you're planning for kidnapping, you must never put their name on the list. When you're putting an assignment for people that do ritual killing, you, their name or anybody that they love and they are concerned must never... You know, from time to time, God allows the devil to come to heaven. If you read the Bible, you'll see. And God warns him. Why? She's saying, I am their fortress. And I must be their fortress. She's he's saying, I am their bunker. I am their strong. What have you been saying? I will say of the Lord, he is my what? Refuge. Say after me, the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my hiding place. Say, I confess regularly. The Lord is my strong tower. He is my protector. I will say, I will say, I will say continuously. I will say. Uh, those are the ones that qualify for divine protection. Those that say. How many of you will say regularly from now? Wave your hand. Wave your hand. What, what, what do Christians say? Hey! Nobody, we can't even enter BRT again. Hey! It's my life. Okay, like this. Hey! Hey, who knows tomorrow? Hey, this nation is finished. Hey, because you are not saying what the word of God says, God took, just folds his hand. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's da this, is a time, you, this is a time you cannot afford for God to fold his hand on your case. Don't say what the sinners are saying. Say what God's word says you say. 
Amen. I will say, oh, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Trust means faith. In him, I put my faith. In him. I don't, do you put your faith? Who do you put your faith in? Police force. Huh? Your, your megad. One person said that. One day the megads came to meet them. It's a joke. I said, ah! Oh, God, be very careful. I had a dream about you. I had a dream and I saw something bad happen. A good or God, what should a good or God do? Go and pack your load. You are sacked to day. What should you be doing? I employed you not to dream or sleep. I employed you so that I can do all the sleeping and dreaming. Ouch! <laughs> That's what a good or God should do. Who is, where is your own trust? So, you must say, God, my faith is in you. God, it's in you I trust. Trust means to have faith. Faith is unwavering trust in God based on his word alone. God, I trust you because you have given me your word. God, see, God readjusts himself on his throne when you talk to him like that. It stares something in God's heart. He is excited when he hears from your mouth that, Lord, I, my trust is in you. I trust. You are the one. Many of times I, I tell God, God, you are so easy to trust. God, you are too, you are too, they, you are too, I just, I just, it's easy to just love you and trust you. Those kind of statements, they thrill the heart of God. And when you are like that, God will not allow any fly to move near you. You must tell him. Amen. Surely. He shall deliver you from the snare. Snare means trap, trap, trap of the fowler. Fowler simply means a hunter of birds. Fowl means birds. Fowl like chicken, fowl, birds. So there are special um, hunters that hunt for bird. That is exactly the way Satan is. Satan is, a, Satan is a hunter for the souls of men and the lives and the destinies. Oh, man, and the good things that should happen to you, Satan, and how does he do it? How does he hunt? He sets traps, just like a, a, a fowler sets snare or traps. But guess what? If you constantly, daily, do not abandon the secret place, you dwell in the secret place, none of Satan's traps will spring and catch you. Because Holy Ghost is always at least one step ahead of Satan. At least. And if you hold his hand, because that's what happens when you are dwelling, when you are worshipping, when you have a personal daily devotion and a relationship that is close and intimate with the Lord, the Holy Ghost is holding you side by side. The Holy Ghost cannot be trapped, so you cannot be trapped. But when the Holy Ghost is like this, and you are so far away, oh, Anything fit happen. So, if you stay close to him, the Bible says that he will deliver you from all of the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Now, that word pestilence is the word disease, all right? Or plague, widespread disease or plague. Huh? Or epidemic. Or pandemic. Coronavirus, COVID-19. is a pestilence. Ebola is a pestilence. Cholera is a pestilence. The kind of sickness that when it comes, people are catching it, catching it, catching it, catching it, catching it, catching it, catching it all over. God says, those types even, those are the scariest ones. Those are the ones that make people afraid the most. But God says, guess what? Even when it comes to those kind of sicknesses that are catching and are spreading wide and are so contagious diseases, the Lord, God has a prophecy, a prophecy and a promise for you. He says that those kind of ones, listen, COVID-19 has made so much noise worldwide. That is a noise, that's an example of a noisome pestilence. You are covered. The promise of God cover you. I say you are covered already. Once you start believing for divine protection here, it covers you. you must, but you must actively 
believe. You must actively say. You must actively dwell in the secret place. You must have intimacy. And when you are getting intimate with God, there are some things he will tell you. You drop the one. Stop this one. Stop talking like that. Stop behaving like this. Stop going to this place. Stop drinking that thing. Stop watching this one. Stop. You will start, you will start cutting some things off your life. Okay? And that's why many don't dwell. Because when they start staying close to God, God will start telling you, these are things I don't like. I don't like this. I don't like iniquity. I don't like sin. I don't like unholiness. I don't like carnality. I don't like... So for you to stay, some people don't... Some people enjoy carnality, so they keep on moving away. And they stop dwelling. And they stop dwelling. And the devil watches. And he's watching. And he's watching. And one day, he just eats. Boom! But learn. Whatever I tell you, stop doing this. You stop it. Whenever I tell you, I don't like this. Then, don't do it again. So that you can keep dwelling. Can you say amen, somebody now? Praise God. If he tells you that your body is a temple of love, your body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. If he tells you don't put smoke in your body, if he says don't drink uh, alcohol, don't smoke uh, weed, don't do snuff, don't go and take that from a door, don't. No, 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 your body is a temple. I want the temple pure. Do what he says you should do. That keeps you in the dwelling place. Hidden where Satan cannot touch you. Praise God. All right. So let's go on now. The Bible says that when there's pestilence around, listen, there's divine protection for you. Number four, he shall cover you with his feathers. So God has feathers. <laughs> and under his wings. So God has wings of protection. So God is like a papa eagle or a mother eagle. All right, but let's maybe a better way for you to understand it is this He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. When I was green, there was a time we stayed in a particular part of Ibadan City when I was very young. Now, in this part of the city, for some reason, people rear lots of um, chicken, lots of chicken, and they will go roaming around. And in those days, um, from time to time, some predator birds, hawks, I don't know if you've ever seen, hawks, asha, hawks, will come around. I remember which children used to be so fascinated. When they ask the, before we even know the hawk is coming, all the little chicks will run, and the mama chick will go into the, the place, and then it will spread its wing, and all the chicks, sometimes five or six, they will right, get under it, and it will sit on them like this, and it will be looking for that hawk that will come. If the hawk comes too close, it will peck the eye of the hawk. But all the chicks are not fighting. They're hiding under the... I mean, I've, just, I mean, I've seen things like that. Wave your hand. God is saying that that's how I am to you. Praise God. All the demonic hawks trying to carry you or whatever, just run under me and let any of them come near. They will lose not only their eyes, they will lose everything they've got. Because God is covering us. I can't hear him. God is covering us. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. So, his truth. What is his truth? Of course, a life of truthfulness, but more than that, Jesus Christ said, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. So, the word of God, when you are listening to God's word, and you, are, you understand God's word, you spend time in God's word, you are declaring God's word over your life, you are pronouncing and trusting. His word is protection. Learn to respect his word. His word itself is protection. That's why when the devil came and he wanted to do whatever temptation to Jesus, each of the three times, Jesus returned and fought back not with bow, arrow, gun, spear. No, he spoke back. It is written. And he spoke the word. It is written. And he spoke the word. It is written. The word of God is our protection against the devil. And the devil cannot do anything. He had to abandon the game and he, had to, he was defeated. Why? Because Jesus understood the power of the word. The truth of God's word shall be your shield protecting you. When the arrows of the devil are, flaming arrows are flying, the shield and the buckler, praise God. Small protection, big, a buckler is a big shield, all right, that protects you all around. But the, but the shield is a smaller one. So, personal or outside, small or big time attacks, the truth of God's word will keep you protected. If you understand that, say Amen. So be a wardite. 
Learn the word. Live the word. Act on the word. Speak the word. Let your life be from anything that the word of God does not sanction. Don't do it. Do things because you have a scriptural basis for what you are doing. You can tell us. Do. This is, these are the verses, two or three verses that assure me I should be doing this or talking like this or going to this place or drinking this. Give me a scripture that tells you to be living in sin. No one. So don't live in sin. Praise God. So, so, number five, verse five. Thou shalt not be afraid. Say after me, I shall not be afraid. You see, God, God and fear are not the same, are not synonymous. That's why whenever God wants to talk to people, he sends an angel to people and they're afraid, they tell them, do not be afraid. God has not given us, the word of God says, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Faith and fear are forces in the realm of the spirit. They are opposites, equal and opposite. Fear attracts darkness. Faith attracts heaven and God and his goodness. Whenever fear hits you, a demon is nearby. I'm always telling people, that's one way I know a demon is nearby. Whenever I feel afraid somehow, the demon is around. <laughs> So, but God says that because there's protection for you, there's divine protection for you, you will not need to be afraid. For the terror, terror means strong fear by night. See, many human beings are afraid of the night. I know people that cannot sleep at night with the lights off. Why not? That's a fear that you shouldn't have. Sleep at Oh, see, all the physical structures that are there at daytime are the ones that are there at the night time. Well, I can't see them. So what? It's just that the sun is not shining. When you wake up in the morning, go on, before the sun, before 6 p.m. in the night, count all the houses on your street. Following morning, after the night, and the night has passed, you wake up and count the houses on your street again. Has it changed? So why are you afraid? What's the issue? It's in the middle of the night. The, spirit, the demonic spirits are the most active. Where did you see that in the scriptures? Oh, you don't know that when it is night here, it is day somewhere else in the world. Geography, please. Or you think the whole world is at night all the time? No. So what is, where are we getting all this from? Undue fears. And so when the devil too sees that you already believe that, so the Satan just, because the Satan knows a few things, and he knows from generation to generation all the 419 tricks he has used for mankind. So he knows that in this area, in this region, in this family, they're always making people afraid at night. So he's assigned demons to them and tell them, we are coming at night. Be afraid. We will visit you at night. One day, my mom, I was in part three university. She came and said, there is a spirit that is disturbing us in our area. It's a bird. It comes, by this time, you know, I was already three years born again, spirit filled, believing God's word. I said, is that why you came to me, to me in school to talk about it? She said, yes. I said, okay, next weekend I'm coming home. I said, okay. I just thought in my mind, what's this woman saying? Which <laughs> bird or no bird? When I got home on Friday, that night, I didn't even, purposely did not kneel down by my bed to say my closing prayer. I just thought, I will see which demon will come. Of course, I picked my Bible after eating and I wanted to sleep. I picked my Bible, put on nice worship, and I was reading my Bible, meditating, and that's how I slept. Around 3 a.m., I just woke up. I don't know what woke me up. My bed was back in the window, and there was a fence, almost like this place, window there, and then fence there. I got up from the bed and looked outside. 
and my eyes and made eye to eye contact with a big bird brown eyes big it looked like an owl big and we don't have owls in those places and the funny thing happened that when I looked at it, it was about to alight and land on the fence. When I looked at it and it saw that I got up, it just did reverse. And flew off with reverse. I looked at it like I said, now God save you today. And I just went to the toilet, this myself, came back, I read my Bible, worship God, prayed, did the spiritual things on today break. Stayed till Sunday, I went. Then, after a few days, my mom came to me and said, that thing, since the day you came, you know it has not been disturbing us again in the area. I just smiled. I said, I don't think you will understand yet, mommy. <laughs> He's eating and the dog is wagging his tail. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Those powers and spirits, are they were defeated over 2,000 years ago. All of them. And for those of us that know it, we enjoy the victory. For those who don't know it or who don't believe it and they claim they are saved, they suffer the consequences also. Always keep that in mind. Can you say amen somebody? So these things are real. Alright. So you will not be afraid for the terror by night. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your night. You should sleep and your sleep should be sweet. That's what the scriptures say. You shall sleep and your sleep shall be sweet. He given his beloved sleep. And the devil can wear you down, wear you down, wear you down. When if, and by making you not to sleep properly. Not to, and then before you know it, your body is not susceptible to sickness and disease. Your mind cannot capture academic work well. Your mind cannot capture good work well. And then before you know, poverty also starts coming. And the person loses their job or whatever. No, 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 no. You need six to eight hours of good sleep every day. And it is part of God's protection and blessing for you. Take it and enjoy it. You will live long. That way. But you cannot sleep for two, three hours. Out of 24 hours. Ugh, the body is not created to walk that way for long. You will not be afraid of the night. Praise God. Let his terror be moving at night. And let them be doing their business. You, me, and you, me and you, let's do our righteous business. Can we say amen somebody now? Neither shall you be afraid of the arrow that flies by the day. So Satan truth does things during the daytime. Oh. Now one day, gas explosion around Sherati. All the people that just died. One day, tanker just so fire. Daytime. So Satan has things he does during the day. He doesn't just think it's night. Oh. He goes around all over to and fro the whole earth. One day, God even saw him and said, Where are you? I said, I've been going all over the whole earth. Waka, 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 waka. Looking for who to destroy. You are not one of them. You are undevourable. You are undestroyable. In Jesus name. No, verse 6. Now will you be afraid for the pestilence. What is pestilence? What's pestilence? Sickness and disease that is widespread. Contagious sickness and disease. It's not your portion. Praise God. Of course. Wear the mask. Take the vaccine. But I hope you know that people wore the mask and they still got sick. I hope you know people took the jabs and they still had coronavirus. I took two, but my faith is not in the jab. My faith is not in the injection. My ultimate faith is in Psalm 91. The Lord is the one preserving me from pestilence and contagious diseases. That is where my faith lies. Of course, wisdom, I do whatever they say, and especially because I want to travel outside of Nigeria. And they need to, a card for me to show that I can travel. Have you taken two injections? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go and take two injections. I need to move. Praise God. Our ultimate trust is in the promise of God. I'm talking of perfect protection. Oh, the vaccine can protect Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't protect. 
That's what science is telling us. The face mask protects sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't protect. So, but the little time it protects, we want to take it. That's wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. But God and his word and his promises, they protect all the time. All the time. Can somebody say amen? Now, I'm not saying be foolish and stupid and leave your mask and go somewhere and everybody is coughing and when they cough into your mouth. No, don't do that. He also gave us sanctified common sense alias divine wisdom. Amen. Christ has made unto us wisdom. So let's add wisdom to it. Balance is important. Let's go on reading. Don't be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. No, we will be afraid of the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at you. Yeah, it is there. God is realistic. These things are happening. These things are going on. A thousand may fall. Fall means die. By kaput. Kick buckets. I don't know what other slang I should say it for you to understand. Fall. Fall. You understand what they mean by fall? Ku. Uh huh. Pi. A thousand shall die at your side. Ten thousand may be dying at your right hand. But God says, it, once I am the one protecting you, it shall not come near you. Can God lie? Open your mouth and tell me. Say yes or no. Don't keep quiet. Can God lie? That is what God wants for you. But you must qualify yourself and you must believe it and you must actively be saying it. You must actively be living it. You must fulfill all the conditions. Let's look at a few other conditions that guarantee this. But God says if you fulfill the few conditions I've put in there, it may be happening to others. It's not your portion. It may be happening to others. I am too big. I'm bigger. I'm so big. I will keep you protected. 100% foolproof protection. Perfect protection I'll give you. He said the thousand may fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes. Shall, you will be seeing it on radio. On TV. You will be seeing it on internet. You may even be seeing it physically sometimes. Pass by them. But the Bible says that it shall what does it say? Only with your eyes shall you behold and you shall see. The worst that shall happen is that you will see it happening to others. The worst that you will experience is that you will see it happening to other people. But only with your eyes will you behold and see. And then God says those things. He calls it what it is. The reward of the wicked. In other words, this is what happens to people because they don't know God. Sinners, children of the devil, they are the ones that this kind of calamities and evils are, re are reserved for. It is God who defines it like that. All those kind of things, kidnapping, no, oh, yahoo plus, oh, ritual killing, no, oh, etc. They will keep on going on until the rapture takes place. After the rapture self, they will increase like a million times more because the Antichrist will now be here. But God says, they are not your portion because you are not the wicked. You are the righteous. The day you give your life to Christ, you decamped from the camp of the wicked and you were translated into the camp of the righteous. You left the way. The wicked are the people who are not saved. The wicked are those who don't know Christ. If you know Christ, wave your hand and shout the loudest hallelujah to Christ. Come on. This is not the reward of the righteous. All this evil going on, they are not the reward of the righteous. But they can affect the righteous who don't understand Psalm 91. That's why I'm teaching this now. And letting you understand that God is up to the task. A thousand may be falling at your side. Ten thousand may fall at your right hand. But God is up to the task. He will make sure it does not come near you. Because those things are the reward of the wicked, not the reward of the righteous. The reward of the righteous is protection. The reward of the righteous is divine protection. The reward of the righteous is perfect protection. Say amen if you are one of the righteous. Now God says, there's a reason why. There's a reason, verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge. Say out loud, the Lord is my refuge. Even you have made the most high. Your habitation after me, the Lord is my habitation. That is another word for dwelling place. Habitation. The place where you dwell. 
every day your intimate relationship with god prayer bible study worship listening to him the day can't be, it is intact nothing is wavering you are so close to god god says if i am your dwelling place like that guess what because you have done that there shall no evil this is 100 percent cover blanket total no evil is permitted whether evil of poverty whether evil of jazz whether evil of kidnapping whether evil of of i don't know what evil, anything that is evil whether evil of earth's men whether evil of of a uh, uh, plane crash whether evil of road accident whether evil of oppression in your dream whether it, nothing that is evil if you stay in me as i'm your dwelling place i'm your shelter you dwell in my secret place you are bad god says if that is what is going on in your life no evil can God lie? This is where you and I have to sit, step back and say, <laughs> if God says no evil, does it mean no evil? Or is he saying, uh, is he saying he will not allow any evil to come upon me? Or is he saying he will not allow most evil to come upon me? He is saying no evil. Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. If you're going to clap, clap properly. Can we walk on the face of the earth without evil touching us? God says so. God says yes. Whose report will you believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. If God says you can walk in a way that no matter what evil is going on, I will make sure that you never experience it. Then God can never lie then I will go for it. Then I will believe for it. Then I will trust him for it. Then I will rearrange my life. Whatever is needed for me to do, I will ask those people to help me to do it so that I can qualify for it. There shall no evil before you. Neither shall any plague. That is plague. There, that's another pestilence. All the sickness and diseases that's going around. Neither shall any of those sickness and diseases, contagious sickness and diseases, neither shall they come near, not only you, anybody that comes to dwell with you, even if they are not your blood relatives, they are also covered. Your blood relatives, covered. Your friends, covered. Everybody should be trying to become your neighbor because they are covered. And then God says, for God shall give his what? Angels. So you see, here we see the next two verses shows that angels have a strong part to play. And as we are, as the days are getting darker and darker, we must realize the role of angels and be able to partner with them properly. One day, I, I, I didn't even know anything about angels until I went to a youth con. I told you the story. I won't tell you the long story. It will take me another 20 minutes. I was not supposed to go somewhere. I didn't know. God knew. Rain was going to fall and beat me seriously. But I didn't know. It didn't look like that. But I knew my spirit. The Holy Ghost kept on telling me, give me a check. Don't go now. Go tomorrow. Don't go now. Go tomorrow. I wanted to go. I wanted to go. As I was trekking to the bus stop, the bus stop is about 10 minutes away from where I was staying. Nobody was on the road. Very quiet road. Somebody, after I walked for about four minutes, somebody tapped me like this. The person's hand tapped was as thick as three of my fingers, heavy on my shoulder. Ah, I looked like this. No for no, nobody there. I said, eh? So I just I spoke up. Somebody just tapped me now. But I was stubborn. I kept on going. Holy Ghost told me, that's your angel. And I'm trying to get you not to and I'll go. I've told them I'm coming in inside the city of Potakota. The rain that beat me, eh? The rain that beat me that day. The rain that be- And I was... And then I got there, self. The people were not there. And the house was shut. So I was standing in the rain. I was soaked to the skin. And I was crying. Both the rain and the tears. What was I crying for? I was repenting. So, and I've been telling the Lord, Lord, teach me how to follow your voice. Teach me how. And I'll just repent and say, God, can you use me like this? I'm so stubborn. Uh, even an angel tapped me. Uh, 
no. And God said, well, you see, I love you so much to the point that I didn't want you drenched by this rain. That's why I kept on trying to. <laughs> Amen. But they have, there's more. They do than that. The Bible says that God will give his angels charge over us. To pro- keep means to protect us in all our ways. Amplified Version says, in all your ways of obedience and all your ways of service. So it's not just all your ways of as I'm going to drink alcohol or as I'm going to buy uh, tramador. No, no, there are some ways angels just say, Father, this is your child. Because they are holy and they will not build iniquity. All right. So, and the Bible says, they shall bear you up in their hands. They shall carry you up in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against, even dashing your foot against a stone in God's plan is not even permitted. Something as little and trivial as that. So, you must learn how to activate your angels. So many of us, our angels are bored. And they are not active. You must learn how to activate your angels for divine protection. Especially the days we are walking in now. When you wake up in the morning and you finish your prayer, release your angels. Send them on a sign. Tell them, I command you, go and get the blessings of God. Go and open the doors and go and effect protection. War against all the forces of hell. In Jesus' name. You do it by faith. Speak it by faith. That is not worshiping angels. That is you are stepping in faith. You are understanding that you are in the army of the Lord. And there are arsenals. There are things God has. Read. Go and read some of these. Um, read I believe in angels. No, no. I believe in vision. Kenneth Hagin. He said he had been praying for money, money, money. Then Jesus came. And Jesus appeared with an angel. And Jesus said. I, I, you've been trusting me for money. And you are. So. So. This angel has a message for you. Jesus again said he told Jesus, but you are here. He said, Yeah, there's sometimes it's just the angel that must talk to you. So the angel stepped forward and told him that yeah, there's something about your finances. I've been sent by the throne from the throne of God to get it done. So can I think he looked at Jesus and said, So I've been waiting for the money. What was he doing here? And Jesus said, Respond to him, send him, dispatch him. Jesus, how do I do that? Jesus told him, tell him, I command you in the name of Jesus, go and cause the money to come. Go and cause every hindrance to be removed. In. And then he said what Jesus said. And the angel went up. Within days, big money. People, the same people you knew before, who were not ready to give, they just started giving. The same thing with protection. With all this BRT drivers becoming this, that, that, that. You better listen to radical teaching and just do it. God spoke to me and said, some, in this last day, some people's lives will depend on this teaching you teach tonight. Whether they act on it or not. Use your angels. That's why there are two verses there. You release them. Command them to go. Because you will judge angels. Amen. So they are servants unto us. So they will go and they will war on your behalf and they will put protection around you, alright? Then, there's another part you have to play. Your authority, verse 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. Adder means serpent or cobra. Remember in Luke 10, 19, Jesus Christ said, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. So he's talking about your authority to walk on the power of the devil from top to bottom. Let's see, your authority as a believer, that consciousness has a large part to play in whether you will enjoy divine protection. You are not the one that will just, they will just kill like common chicken. You have authority, you are seated with Christ. You are not the one that your life will just expire like that. You are the right hand of God Almighty on the same throne as Jesus sitting before the Father. You are the one crowned. There's a crown on your head in the realm of the spirit. So authority, you must be aware of who you are every day. Remind yourself every morning before you step out. Authority speaking. Royalty is stepping out. Why? Because you shall tread upon the lion and the other. Those are the things that bring all these 
evil and destruction and harm. And then you shall also, and, and then the dragon you shall trample under your feet. Revelations also call Satan dragon. You shall trample. He, they belong under your feet. All of these people that are kidnappers and thieves and robbers and uh, people, highway robbers and kidnappers and uh, 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 rapists and all of those things, they are demon possessed. It is the demons that is inside of them that is moving them to express things like that. When you deal with those demons, before you step out of your house, when you are coming, the demons in those people will make those people avoid you. Because you have dealt with them before you came out of your house. Don't leave house anyhow anymore. Are you with me? Say amen now. All right. Good. Why am I saying this? It's a war out there. It's a battlefield out there. But guess what? Victory is yours. Because, now listen to this. Because, so this is under reason why divine protection will be yours. This is under reason. reason. Because means reason. He has set his love upon me. Listen, is the Lord your first love? This comes with that issue of dwelling place of the Lord. Is the Lord the, the number one law and number two law that God is interested in? You must love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy strength. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. Number one, you must love. Is the Lord your first love? The only way you can make him your first love is wake up in the morning, read the word, pray, worship, listen to him, listen to his direction, commit your day into his hand, all day long, be talking to him in your mind. That is a sign that you have set your love upon the Lord. Amen, somebody now. Without that, divine protection may elude. Alright, so because he has set his love upon me, therefore, God says, for that reason I will deliver. So it's only those who have decided that the Lord is my first love. The Lord is my love num lover, number one. My love for the Lord is fervent. I'm burning. My heart is burning with love for him and his word. And I'm obe if you love me, keep my commandments, you said. So that's what major sign that you love him. I'm keeping his word. I'm keeping his command. When you're like that, God says, deliverance is for you. Protection is for you. And then he says, I will set him on high. Promotion is for you. Elevation is for you. Because he has known my name. That's another area of authority. What does it mean? Because he has known my name. Because he has known my name. Of course, well, he's Jehovah Jara, he's Jehovah Rohi, he's Jehovah Rofeka, he's Jehovah Sikeno. Not just that. Because he has known my name means also you have given your life to Christ. But even more than that, because he has known my name means he has known the power. Name means authority. The name of Jesus is the embodiment of the authority of God Almighty. Because you have a revelation concerning your authority as a believer. Because of Jesus. He has known my name. You understand authority. You understand that you have been exalted in authority. Far! Like I always say, there's no way. Satan, who is the highest creature in the kingdom of darkness, there's no way he can jump and touch you where you are elevated. You are too high, infinitely higher than his level. That's your authority because of his name. Because he has known my name. That understanding will bring divine protection. He shall call upon me. And God says, I will answer. Not I may or I may not. I will answer. Him. Can God lie? I can't hear. Can God lie? I will be with him in trouble. When there's trouble all around, don't worry. God is there. Amen. And God said, and I will make a way. I will deliver you. I will make a way for you. And then not only that, I will honor you. You will have a testimony on top of the whole matter. I will honor you. When God says I will honor you, when God honors you, every human being that comes across your way will fall down and honor you. I will honor him. With long life. <laughs> will I 
satisfy him. There are two things. Longness and satisfaction. There are some long lives that are just useless. Some people are so, after they've done so much wickedness, they are still alive in this world and you wonder. If they've not surrendered their lives to Christ, the long life they are having is a long life of guilt, eating them on the inside, eating them on the inside. And then when they go to hell, then their punishment will be higher than everyone because they had more time given to them by God to repent. So a person living in sin that doesn't want to repent should just pray for short life. <laughs> but for us righteous ones, long life with satisfaction on earth. With satisfaction. And then until you are satisfied, the Bible says that 70 years, if peradventure for strength, 80 years. But that was written by Moses for people in the old covenant. The same Moses that was writing 70 years, 80 years, lived to be 120 years. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Under an inferior covenant, based upon inferior promises. So when you get to be 80, if you are not satisfied, just tell the Lord, another 10 more. When you get to 90, and you are still not yet satisfied, just tell the Lord, another 10 more. With health, he will give you Praise God. Once you walk close to God, ultimately you, you determine when you go. Somebody look at me and say, what is that? It's, it's New Testament. Paul said that, you know, I'm thinking about all this dying stuff. For me, for me to stay and keep on living, it's beneficial for you churches, Corinthians, Romans, Thessalonica, all you churches that I've set. Because I'll keep on teaching you and discipling you. But for me to go, die, is great gain. It's far better, he said. Far better. Why? Because I go to heaven, I go and chop my life. Up. Now life has begun. I'm walking on streets of gold. I'm like, my, my body is down to youthful age. I'm enjoying. Oh, man. It's far better. Then he said, but what I will. Then a few verses later, I said, but I believe that I will stay. That tells me, God is telling us there. If you walk with me close enough, you can even determine when you want to go, when you don't want to go. Well, go and read your Bible. What you believe for, you get. <laughs> but I saw it there. So Paul, when he was ready, was when he was ready. Rise up, everybody. Stand up. I will say! How do you activate divine protection? You must learn to say the whole of Isaiah of Psalm 91 regularly. Regularly. If not daily. Regularly. So I'm going to teach you how to say it now. Are you ready? I'm going to teach you how to say it. Because there are some of them that is direct. Some of them you have to now personalize the way you say it. Okay? So it's not just opening it and putting your, Bible, your, your pillow on it and then... And you sleep and you think you no, you take it, you put it in your heart, you understand it, and you say it. The cycle is complete. Protection is assured. Say after me, I that dwell in the secret place of now. Say, let's say it properly with confidence. Say, I that dwell in the secret place of the most high, I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of my Lord you are my refuge you are my fortress my God in you will I trust surely God shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence my God shall cover me with his feathers under his wings I shall trust his truth shall be my shield and buckler I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand may fall at my right hand. It shall not come near me. It shall not come near me. 
only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. I am not the wicked. I am the righteous. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, I have made him my habitation. There shall no evil before me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For the Lord has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder. I tread upon the young lion and the dragon. I trample them under my feet because I have set my love upon my God. Therefore will my God deliver me. The Lord sets me on high because I have known his name. I call upon my God and the Lord answers me. The Lord is with me in trouble. The Lord delivers me. The Lord honors me. With long life. With long life. With long life. The Lord satisfies me. And shows me salvation. Now lift your hand up and just say I thank you Father. Lift your hand and thank the Lord. Tell the Lord I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you because that word that has gone forth. Uh, has produced uh, security protection. Uh, all around me. Father the word has gone forth. Uh, thank you because uh, testimonies of protection and preservation. Shall be for everyone that has heard. And will act on this word. Uh, thank you our Father. For we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That same attitude. Let's just go ahead and with that same attitude of faith. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and give our offerings tonight. Our tithes and offerings. Remember to honor God with your increase tonight. Let's remain standing as we give. Um, let's give cheerfully. Let's give bountifully. Let's give in the following ways. Cash, checks, transfer, the POS at the entrance. Amen. If you need an envelope, signal signify to the ushers they will give you an envelope to pay your tithes if you are doing so tonight. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for the privilege we have again tonight to give. Father, we ask, oh God, that our seat tonight will be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that heaven will honor our giving tonight. As we honor you with our tithes, Lord, we declare that the devourer is rebuked for our sakes in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks and praise as we give cheerfully. Let it be acceptable unto you right now. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. We go dance forward, give cheerfully in Jesus' name. I'm acknowledging you for who you are, for what you are. In my life, oh, I am legend you for who you are, what you are. In my life, oh, I am legend you for who you are, for what you are. In my life, oh, I am legend you for who you are. Dance like you are, dance like you are. In my life, you are the miracle worker. You are the king of kings. You are the rainmaker. Oh yeah. In my life, you are the miracle worker. Dance like you are, dance like you are, Baba. It's a song. I don't know if you remember. If you know it, or you remember it. It says, "They that dwell at him the secret place." Oh. Do you guys know it? Hey, yeah, uh, Marshall. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. One more time. Be the dweller in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. And my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. 
once. Let's try again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide the shadow of the Almighty. Sing. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust, and I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. How many of you have had that song before? With your hand. You've had it before. All right. Okay. Very good song to sing. Praise God. All right. Let's announcement. Remain standing. Remain standing. You've been sitting for over an hour. Announcement. Amen. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so all services remain the same on Saturday morning, 7 a.m. Please, all men and boys, let's get on Zoom and let's intercede, let's pray. Remember again, the seven numbers, the people that you have, seven people you are praying for. If you don't have the list yet, have it and pray for them to be saved or to be restored to the Lord. And the Lord will meet them anywhere where they are in the world. People that you know that are not saved or living for God. Pray on a daily basis for those seven names. Also, Friday, Saturday, remember we are all going on evangelism. So if it's your turn, please lead us. Let them know. Let's go out and bring them in. The people you have been evangelizing since January and February, bring them in into the service on services on Sunday. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. If you've been noticing some people have not been coming to church radically, go and visit them. Talk to them. We miss them. Bring them into the Lord's house and the Lord himself will reward you for it. Lift your hands. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you. The word that has gone forth tonight, may it be a part of your life. May it be a reality in your life. May divine perfect protection be your portion as you go out and as you come in. In Jesus name. Amen. Shake three people and tell them, how are you doing? The Lord is your portion. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High Oh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty
and your life can have all And here I help you. I will <laughs> welcome you to church. Grace Family International Church is a church that built us up spiritually and physically. And we want you to be a part of this family so that you can grow with us and your life can have a total turnaround. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we want to remind you about something. Our youth conference. And then you've been waiting last year. Words a blast. Come on. But this year, it's going to come with some spikes in it. Come on. Okay, it's going to be happening on the 27th and 28th of this month. Of this month. So you've got to come with every person that you can invite in your office, in your school, in everywhere. Just go around and bring in people for this program because your life is ready to take a new turn in God's presence. Yes. Well, like, we're going to have music, ministration, we're going to have word from our own senior pastors, Reverend Zinka and Diola Ojo. Come on. You know, for sure. Now. I got yes, you know what I'm talking about. It's going to be so much fun and, you know, educative, you know, entertaining. Just come along, bring your friends, bring everybody along, and you're going to have a great time in God's presence. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. We just want to remind you about our Sunday services. Do not forget, 7.15 and 9 a.m. And every Wednesday, we meet in Church Auditorium at 6 p.m. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. See ya. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Agampi, and here I help you. A G. I want to welcome you to church. Grace Family International Church is a church that built us up spiritually and physically. And we want you to be a part of this family so that you can grow with us and your life can have a total turnaround. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we want to remind you about something. Our youth conference. And then you've been waiting last year. Words a blast. Come on. But this year, it's going to come with some spikes in it. Come on. Okay, it's going to be happening on the 27th and 28th of this month. Of this month. So you've got to come with every person that you can invite in your office, in your school, in everywhere. Just go around and bring in people for this program because your life is ready to take a new turn in God's presence. Yes. Well, like, we're going to have music, ministration, we're going to have word from our own senior pastors, Reverend Zinka and Diola Ojo. Come on. You know, for sure. Now. I got yes, you know what I'm talking it's about. It's going to be so much fun and, you know, educative, you know, entertaining. Just come along, bring your friends, bring everybody along, and you're going to have a great time in God's presence. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. We just want to remind you about our Sunday services. Do not forget, 7.15 and 9 a.m. And every Wednesday, we meet in church auditorium at 6 p.m. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. See ya. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Agam.